first time I rode a Touareg was back in September of 2022 at Aprilia's Australian launch of its first modern adventure build. The launch was held in the Victorian town of Mildura and we rode a lot of sand. Being from a dirt bike background, I'd never ridden an Aprilia before, never sat on one, couldn't name a single model without a hint. What I found was a bike that made me want to ride all the more techie trails off to the side of the dirt roads. A bike that felt more dirt bike like than any other adventure bike I'd ridden before it. And we were allowed to play hard on the Touareg all day. But that was also the problem. It was only one day. I knew I needed to ride the Touareg on trails that are more familiar to me to get a really good understanding of the bike. But to its credit, it got me thinking about the bikes that had already changed the game in the modern era. Starting with the 2016 Africa Twin, KTM's 790 and of course the bigger brother the 890, the much loved T7, and the stable of Austrian 700s. Some of these near iconic models are the bikes that Aprilia has to stare down if it's going to make a lasting impression. Has it got what it takes? I brought one home to find out. The first day started with cool and calm conditions. It wasn't going to stay that way though, an absolute scorcher was building. On my big Africa Twin Adventure Sports, I usually ride the more open trails in this area, which is just a couple of hours from home. But on the Touareg, I instinctively went hunting for the more technical trails. You can sometimes find an adventure bike's limitations off-road fairly quickly, but the Aprilia wasn't showing any weaknesses and its outstanding stock KYB suspension was without a doubt the star of the show. Whenever I ride the Touareg, my overriding feeling about this bike is it's so much fun. And it's not a word you really stamp onto a lot of adventure bikes. I mean, an adventure bike is kind of a tool to get you from here to there. And it offers various solutions to do that. But I don't think I, 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 I get off many bikes and think that bike is fun. The day is fun, the ride is fun, places you visit it, but not the bike. That is a fun bike. They even offer it in fun colours. That sort of goes against a lot of what we find in the adventure bike market where some bikes actually look pretty drab. The Royal Enfield looks like a piece of haunted furniture. No, this, this is nice and bright. This will flummox predators. And I like that. It's good fun. Again, back to that word. And isn't that what we're here for? Of course it is. But that doesn't mean the Touareg is perfect, nor that it means it's for everyone. So for example, it's mystifying to me why it doesn't come standard with a rear luggage rack. Because there is nowhere else on the bike to cinch down just the simplest of bags. And that, that's a little bit disappointing as an adventure bike is a tool, as we mentioned. It does have a USB output, but the output is actually somewhat a little bit weak. And if you use one of the uh, uh, wireless chargers, say from SP Connect, for example, like I use, and then you bring up a map on your phone, you probably still will lose charge throughout the day and you'll need to take that wireless off and plug it directly into the phone. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's F F-35s flying overhead, which brings me to the sound of the Touareg. When you're on the pipe on the Touareg, it sounds mint. It has no real growl to it at low revs, but when you wick that on and, and put it up under load, it sounds fantastic. And I found myself today sort of, I, I didn't mean to come to where I am today, but I found myself poking around in smaller trails. You can turn this around, no problem anywhere. The bush turn circle on this thing is ridiculous. You basically just turn it around on its front wheel. And because it's so light, and because the balance is so even, it's a very easy bike to handle in all situations in tricky terrain. It was getting bloody hot at this point, but luckily I knew somewhere I could go just to cool off a little. Energy, energy, energy. 
lives He walking on lightning, I better be running on 10 Go till it ends, yeah. you don't wanna be one of my enemies As much as I love riding through all that slop, it does make a mess on the bike and it smelt like it had ridden through the earth's bum hole. So I came home, gave it a good clean and I thought we'd have a look at how easy it is to access the air filter on the 660. Now, on Murray, it's a pain in the ass, you bastard. But on the 660, they say it's a lot easier. So let's give it a go and see how easy it is. Okay, so to get started, you take the seat off, which reveals the lithium battery. And not to make this sound like an episode of Sesame Street, but then you've got one, two, three, four torque screws, and then another three under the fuel cap. Hand on heart, I swear, this is how fast I operate in a workshop. Once you've removed that top cowling, you'll find there are four more screws to remove the top of the air boot, which is where you'll find that paper air filter, which you'll then want to set on fire and replace with a foam air filter. And while we're here, let's take a look at the electronics. Aprilia has a single button on the right side of the bars for switching between modes, for which you get an individual, explore mode, urban, and of course, off-road. Jumping over to the left-hand switch block and a long press brings up the full settings menu. From here, you can customize a massive amount of things. You know, guys, it's always good to get a second opinion on anything, be it, should I change jobs? What's that strange lump on my ass? I'm sure it's nothing. And of course, your thoughts on a motorcycle. And I'm gonna get a second opinion on the Tuareg from the preeminent legend of off-road riding in Australia. He's finished, I think, more six-day Enduros than anybody else on the planet. He's got an Order of Australia medal just for being an awesome dirt bike dude. He owns Ballard's Off-Road, and of course, he is Jeff Ballard. So let's wander down to Jeff's HQ, get him on the Tuareg and see what he thinks. GB's place is about three and a half hours from mine, which gave me plenty of time to get a feel for the Aprilia on the open road. The Tuareg shares an engine with the Twano and the RS660, which is at home screaming around racetracks, so it's no big surprise that the slightly detuned Tuareg happily sits at freeway speeds all day. We hit the road at first with GB on his battle-worn BMW and me on the Aprilia. And almost immediately we rode into thick scrub that Jeff assured me was a well-known trail. We eventually pulled over and swapped bikes, and GB got his first taste of the Aprilia Tuareg 660. Now, Jeff Ballard is going to do Jeff Ballard things, and he peeled off the road and onto a pretty speculative trail section to give the Tuareg a run in some proper scrub. It's impressive how well the Aprilia handles these types of conditions, not least of all because it's their first modern adventure bike, but also they don't have a dirt bike in their range to refer back to like Yamaha or KTM. But when it comes to that all-important chassis and suspension package, they absolutely nailed it.
searching for love for sure. Hearts are now anchored, we're searching no more. Braving our way through the darkest of night, dressed in the sky. As we entered the town of Bathurst, we did a couple of laps of the iconic race circuit before ducking into the National Motor Racing Museum and checking out a couple of Jeff's race bikes on display there. So yeah, it was one of the special ones, had a few HRC bits on it. Obviously, uh, you know, big fan. the tank is really cool. It's got an air chamber going through to get cool air back towards the air box. This is an oil separator. If you rev them too hard, they used to blow oil out of the crankcase, so that's all slow that up. Um, yeah, we got a swing arm from Honda at the time, HRC, big fan, I think I might have mentioned that. It's got a whole XR400 kind of subframe and seat. Um, and a uh, special gearbox, you know, we ran three speed and four speeds. Belly, belly was fine on the three speed, but I used to fall off all the time because neutral was at the bottom. Here's a, a six day bike from Chile. Um, 2007 and you know you keep some bikes here and there and you go where do you put them what do you do with it so Bathurst Museum contacted me about another bike and I go well I've got a few Uh, yeah, the 660 Aprilia, yeah, I was lucky enough that Damien came up and we uh, went for a really decent ride on him and I basically loved the thing, I thought it was great. He, he loved it, he introduced it to me that way and I thought, well, let's just see how it goes. Um, very, very good, sort of, let's call it a mid-size, I suppose, but um, very balanced bike. Um, I thought it handled extremely well for a decent size thing. Uh, it's, manners are great on the road, you know, some of the smaller ones, once you get below that are a bit hard on the road. It's a bit more of a challenge, but easier on the dirt. So that thing's pretty good all rounder. Um, thought it had uh, awesome power, sounded unreal. Um, maybe not as much as the T7 Yamaha right down low. Now, I'm a fan of a big windscreen, so I'd probably try and find something, you know, that way. Um, and it was really tricky, you know, there was nothing to be able to tie anything onto the back of it. I'm sure there's some accessories out there, so yeah, if I was going to grab one of those, I think I'd be looking for something just to hold some basics on the back. Um, but besides that, it's got a lot of things going for it. The electronics were fantastic. Um, you can do a lot with that. I love the cruise control. It's got some pretty amazing features. So overall, the thing was a pleasure to ride and uh, we had a great couple of days riding. What it really has done here is produce a bike that's easy to ride, enjoyable to ride, and rewarding to ride. It encapsulates so much of what's great about the modern adventure bike that leans closer to a dirt bike pedigree than ever before. And while it's at a disadvantage in dealership numbers, it gives up very little to the competition in pure performance. Aprilia got the most important stuff right, and I'd be happy to ride the Touareg far out of sight any day of the week.